Hello there. Today we're talking UK pickups. So I was recently on vacation in the UK, um, catching up with some friends and family, and uh, also took the time to go and visit some shops. And uh, well, look at what I managed to pick up. So uh, I'm going to take a quick look at everything now, and then uh, a few other things I will make uh, separate videos for and cover them another time. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to go through all these things bit by bit and uh, we'll see what I've got. Now, I want to start with the obvious things and that's these chocolate bars. Um, this is uh, the Club Orange chocolate bar. Um, well, if you're in the UK, you know what these are. Um, for everybody else, these are a chocolate bar from the UK. Um, always had these when I was a kid and um, so, so they've been around for quite a while and the McVitie's Club they used to have the advert that if you like a lot of chocolate on your biscuit you join our club and these things are absolutely delicious so I'm gonna just unwrap this now and uh, show you what the bar looks like there we go it's uh, that and um, I'll just do a quick uh, taste test if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's, um... oh, damn, that's good. Um, that was, um... Mm -hmm. yeah. I am, yeah. mm. Oh wow. Mm. Oh man. Oh, it's a long time since I had one of those. The next one we have is a penguin bar. These are also made by McVitie's. I believe back in the day that the penguin bar and the club bar were made by two separate companies. So obviously something has happened and they've been bought out. But the penguin, as you can see, it's a uh, pick up a penguin. Um, that was also uh, from back in the day, a bit of advertising. So let's open this one up and see what that looks like. So you can see there, just a, like a chocolate bar, like two bits of biscuit. Um, taste test. Oh, no. Mm. Oh, that's nice. You can see we have a chocolate biscuit, chocolate biscuit, and then this layer of chocolate between the two biscuits there. And that's some. Um, mmm. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. penguin and the last of the bars was this uh, tonics caramel now um, these my father used to always have and I was never allowed to eat them they were always uh, for my father and not not for us kids we had the penguins and the clubs so um, this is really old school and still tonics um, and still, according to uh, advertising, still the same size as they were in the 1980s. They're the other two bars, I'm not quite sure. So uh, I'll just open this up for you. And see, it's actually wafers with caramel and uh, uh, chocolate. So uh, taste test. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the wafer. Mmm. So much good. Hmm. I think this is really the best of the of the three. Hmm. Oh. I was way for this. Hmm. 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 Okay. 
moving on. Okay, well, that's the chocolate bars done and dusted. Um, the best way uh, to store those chocolate bars is definitely via your mouth into your stomach. Um, okay, now, everybody knows, I'm sure, what these are. These I ordered on uh, eBay. They are the uh, struts for the Millennium Falcon landing ramp. I had to order them, well I actually got my brother to order them uh, from uh, eBay in the uh, UK as they were cheaper and uh, if I'd done it the, the sending cost was just astronomical. Uh, you see this one here is slightly damaged, let me just bring that, up. there you go, you can see there, slightly damaged, but that doesn't really bother me, that means that they are, well to me, they look pretty much original. Hopefully they are original. They should be original uh, Kenner or Palatoy. And uh, yeah, they're going to look great in the Falcon. And now I can finally have the, the, the ramp open when it's on display. So, Millennium Falcon ramp struts. So my uh, other eBay purchase was these four Batman cards, which are the, if you've seen my um, Batman 89 Tops trading cards video, you'll know that I was missing four cards. So these are the final four that complete my collection. Uh, again, I had to get my brother to um, order these for me. Um, the difference in price was he paid, I think six or seven pounds, including, um, sending cost whereas to get them here to the Netherlands was going to cost me almost 50 pounds or 50 euros so um, I did the sensible thing and uh, my brother bought them and gifted them to me um, yes so I'm very happy uh, now to have all my Batman cards everything completed um, the next thing I have is this Lego Boba Fett here that is actually fake Lego. Uh, I bought him from a, a small store on the Isle of Wight and they had lots of all different figures. Um, you can see with this one he's actually got sort of an official looking Boba Fett blaster there in the backpack. But he is a bit bit of a chubby Boba Fett. I don't know if his helmet comes off. I've tried oh yeah, oh, he's got no face either. He's just uh, faceless. But yeah, he only cost two pounds. So um, whilst I was there, I thought I'd pick that up. If I put in, I have here the official Lego Boba Fett. So you can see this one. Yeah, he's very, he's a bit more chubby chubby looking, chubby boba, and the backpacks also differ, but for display purposes, yeah, happy with this little guy. Next up we have this stretchy boba fat, now I normally open everything but this one is in a very nice um, retro packaging so I think I'll be keeping this one on display like this you can see the back of the packaging there they've really uh, taken on the Kenner style of packaging I really like it. it's very nice and retro they also had a Darth Vader I believe and maybe maybe a Stormtrooper it doesn't say on the back which ones are also available but yeah this is only a few pounds I found him in the supermarket. So, uh, yeah. Had to have him. He looks really cool. But I will never find out how stretchy he is. I'm just going to take this example picture here as how stretchy he is. It's good enough for me. Then we have something that I said I was never, ever going to buy. It's a Funko Pop. That's a Funko Pop of Indiana Jones. Um, 
we were in a big toy store there and I was rather disappointed they had very limited Star Wars and absolutely no G.I. Joe um, but they did have a thousand different Funko Pops and when I saw they had an Indiana Jones one uh, oomed and ahmed for a bit and I thought wow he's only small I'll find a place for him I'm a big indie fan so uh, this one I'm going to open right now so let's have a look at what a Funko Pop is all about and there we go Dr. Indiana Jones with his bobbly head that kind of a nice um, stand I guess he's on nice detail for his body yeah I'm, I'm not a massive fan of these things but for a display I mean oh, it's quite nice I did think about getting the, um, uh, the Temple of June Temple of June Temple of Doom Indiana Jones which I think is on the back of the box here also uh, this one well uh, I say it's Temple of Doom I think it's just uh, Indiana Jones without his leather coat on but I decided there wasn't enough variation between this one and this one so this will do this will do for my Funko Pops one and done people one and done so, Indiana Jones. Next up we have this Black Series Mick Mayfield. I'm a big Bill Burr fan. And um, when I saw this one was gonna be released, I, I, I looked him up online, but he was very expensive to get. And uh, then strolling through a record shop, as you can see, 50% off. Um, again, very strange that in a toy shop you, you can't get these. This was, uh, as I say, in a record store. But they had a whole selection of different Star Wars things. They also had some of the retro collection there. And nothing I really wanted. I thought about getting an Emperor, but I think I will just get a real vintage Kenner Emperor for my collection. Um, yes, so. Uh, I'm going to do a separate video on, on, on Mr. Mayfield here and uh, unbox him in that one and see exactly what he's like. So, uh, it's an interesting face sculpt. Looks like he's gurning a little bit, but there you go. I'm going to go nicely with my Mandalorian. Nice bit of box art there, Mr. Burr. Okay, so there we go. Watch out for a future video where I'm going to unbox this. Okay, the rest of the pickups here that you see are actually all my old childhood stuff. So I have these um, three mask books um, from the Mini World series. I have uh, uh, another, the fourth one. I think there was only four in the line. So it's here on the back, it gives. Uh, Masquerade, Volcano of Venom, Double Double Cross, and Car Wars. Um, this one is then Car Wars. This one's Volcano of Venom. And this one is Masquerade. So the other one I have in my display should then be Double Double Cross. Um, so I'm going to cover these also in a separate video. Um, so that's with, with those books. But also from the Mini World books. I found these um, GoBots, Challenge of the GoBots, Champions of Lixil and the Wagner Sirens. Um, I have no idea what these are about. Again, it looks like there was four in the series, but I only have the two. Um, I found these in a box in, in my father's attic, also with the mask ones. and. Um, yeah, I have, I have absolutely no recollection of having these when I was a kid. So um, it's quite pretty cool to find something you never realized you had. I knew I had the mask ones. But these ones, um, yeah, pretty cool. I'm gonna, gonna have to read these. I think I'll cover these also in a um, in another video, maybe uh, with my GoBots. Okay, and then I have 
a Transformers book that I found, Autobots Lightning Strike. This was in the same box as the other books. Uh, Megatron there on the back. Um, maybe I'll cover this with my Transformers. It looks uh, like a nice book. Some nice artwork in there. Yeah, so that's another one for later. I also found all these old catalogues. Britain's Matchbox. Matchbox and Matchbox. I did also have a, a Dinky Toys one, but I don't know what I've done with it, which is kind of frustrating because it was a really nice one, but I'm sure I'll find that. I'll cover all these in a, in a separate video. Um, also found this Centurions card game. I wish I'd found my actual Centurions, but um, for now, the card game will do. Hey, Dinky Toys, that's what happened to it. We'll look at this in a minute. And as you can see, you get lots of cards. I have no idea how to play the game. All the Centurions there. Crystal Kane. Doc Terror. So I think I'll uh, look at this also in another video. Let's put that over there. Another quick look at the Dinky Toys booklet. This is truly old school. I think this was my father's. I don't know if there's a date on here. No, I don't see any dates. Printed in England, so it was probably made a long time ago when they used to make things in England. This is really cool. I remember looking through this when I was a kid. Yeah, so I will cover this again. In another video and then the last two things I have Street Hawk puzzle I don't know if you remember Street Hawk there's only ever one series of it the man the machine um, oh it cost me well it cost my parents one pound 99 back in the day I don't know if it's complete but it looks pretty cool and masters of the universe also, a uh, 150 piece puzzle. Again, I have no idea if it's complete. Shall we open it? Don't know how long this elastic band's been on there. Oh, okay. I guess it's complete. Just do a quick count. Yeah, 100, yeah there's 150 pieces in there for sure. So, there you go. That was all the stuff that I picked up when I was in England. Let's put some of this back here. So we can see it again. Indy there. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know. Um, if there's uh, things in here you'd like to see in, a, in an extra video in its own stuff. Um, if you want to know what the caramel bars and the club bar taste like, hit me up in the comments and I'll let you know exactly how delicious they were. Um, yes, again, I hope you liked this video. Um, if you wanna subscribe, subscribe. Um, please share the video with someone else that might enjoy this kind of stuff. And I'll see you on the next one.